good. Thank you. Just testing this out, but can you all see the 2019 annual report? Yes. Very good. That looks good to me. Just want to make sure that was working before we got started. Oh, there's Amber. All right. I've never hosted a Zoom meeting before, so bear with me. Oh, we're all scared. I believe Casey is going to join us as well. Hello, Amber. I think you're currently muted. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Can everybody hear each other as well as me? Yes, I, I think I can. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm good. All right. Okay, I'm one more. I'm the last person, then I'll be out It is two o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, Please bear with me. This is my first time hosting a Zoom meeting, so I will do my best to keep things moving. Um, since this is a public meeting, it is being broadcast over YouTube right now. Um, we're also recording the meeting and the group chat, if anyone chooses to use that, will also be made available to the public. So all of these are public records uh, for your information. Um, since we did not have a um, meeting in April due to COVID, um, our current chair, um, Linda and Samantha, their terms both expired. Um, they both had uh, told the city that they did not want to seek um, an appointment to another term. So those two seats are currently vacant, which means as a standard uh, matter, Linda um, Gowaltney is now our chair. And so the reason I have elect okay. I have elect chair and or uh, vice chair is uh, Linda. If you would like to be chair, then we need to find someone to replace your uh, seat as vice chair. And if you don't want to be chair, then we really need to hold an election for a chair before we begin. So, um, Linda, I believe that I'm fine with being chair. If everyone's fine with that. Okay. Okay. So, Linda, um, I think I need a nomination. I'll nominate Linda. Thank you. Amber is nominated. Linda is chair. Is there a second? I would second the nomination. Okay. So I'm trying to find my minutes from the last meeting. Just one second. Jeremy, do we have a note taker? That would be me. Okay. Yep. I'm going to try and keep this all together. Okay. So we have a. A uh, motion um, by Amber to nominate Linda Gwaltney to be chair of the Sales Tax Audit Committee. That was seconded by Ethan. Are there any other nominations? Do we need a vice chair? We have to finish this first, but yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Hearing no other nominations, uh, all those in favor of Linda Gwaltney being chair of the Sales Tax Audit Committee, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Linda is now chair of the Sales Tax Audit Committee. We so. don't even have to change the nameplate. That's nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Linda, your first act will be to um, ask the committee if there are nominations for a vice chair, please. Oh, okay. Uh, nominations for vice chair. Either one of you. <laughs> um, I don't really want to do it. I feel like I need a little more experience here. But well, yeah, I think we're all kind of inexperienced here. <laughs> so I don't think that that's necessarily that's bad. Not, I don't get to use that cop out. <laughs> uh, I, I would be happy to do it only if Amber does not want to do it. I nominate Ethan to be the vice chair. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> all those, uh, anyone else, I guess? Um, 
All in favor of Ethan being the vice chair? Aye. Two ayes. Anyone opposed? Ethan is our vice chair. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> so now I guess we need to go on to approving um, the minutes of the February 3rd, 2020 meeting, which was like, you know, forever ago. If anyone remembers it, good for them. But we do have some uh, minutes somewhere, I think. Yeah. Yes, we do have those minutes. I'm pulling them up right now. Hopefully you all can see those. Yes. It was a relatively short meeting on February 3rd, but I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. move to approve the meeting minutes. I second that. Um, <clears throat> it's for me to call the, the, the vote, <laughs> I guess, um, all those in favor of accepting the minutes from February 3rd, 2020. Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Bear with me just one second here. Okay. Our First order of business will be to discuss the 2019 annual report. I'm pulling that up now. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Very good. So the 2019 annual report did not change significantly from what was presented in the fourth quarter report for 2019. Essentially the only change was the um, sales tax accrual for um, the sales tax that was re um, collected in 2020 but reported for 2019. And so um, for the, uh, we'll start with the um, capital infrastructure sales tax, which is the 0.3 sales tax for streets and infrastructure. The budget for 2019 was 5.5 million. Um, collections were uh, just over that at 5.59 million. The unspent tax that uh, has accumulated from prior years is 4.375 million. Does everybody see that? And then the projects, the projects that were approved by the city commission and completed during uh, fiscal year 2019 are listed below there. So as you can see, all of these projects, um, staff believes, uh, comport with the voters' intent of the capital sales tax. And at the end of all the expenditures, uh, we're showing one. 0.17 uh, million available for projects to be um, funded in future years. The only note I have is in addition to that uh, half a cent that most of it goes to capital, 500,000 of that was reserved for uh, fire apparatus to be purchased in a future year. So of that 1.1 million, 500,000 of that is already spoken for, if you will, by the fire department. Other than that, I will stand for any questions you may have. Yes, Jeremy, I looked at the, um, the fourth quarter of 2019 report, and I know that was the unaudited report. So right. I see a number of additions that were added to various projects, correct? Correct. A lot of those additions will be mm -hmm. invoices that came in after January 1st, but were applied back to um, the December period of 2019. Okay. The one thing that I did was I looked, I compared the two mm -hmm. and I, I noted the difference okay. and, um, the difference that I came up with was added to the, that report was 900, I'm sorry, excuse me. $396,468 is what I came up with comparing the projects. Right. Okay. So then by my calculations, I think we should have 
$1,182,949 instead of the $1,000,000, what is it, $177,000. Follow what I'm saying? I follow what you're saying. I'm, I'm, you're saying based on the, the uh, current year tax collected on this report or the one from the fourth quarter? Well. Because the sales tax has changed as well as the expenditures. Okay, maybe that's what I'm not understanding because I was just kept comparing the project totals from the unaudited fourth quarter version to the audited end of the year version. Right. And so we, we had revenue that came in and we also had expenditures that came in. So you have to, you have to account for both the revenue increases and the expenditure increases. Oh, uh, the I differences. see. Okay. Okay. That's the difference. And cause it was like, four, it's all, we only talk about $5,000. Right. What I came up with. And that's the difference from the revenue is like about that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, without getting too terribly in the weeds, yeah. the way, yeah. um, the way accounting works is we really want to try to record the revenue for the period in which it was received, not when it was earned. So the January and February revenue that was on the first quarter report of 2019 was actually yeah. an audit adjustment for the 2018 report. And so every, every year, that's essentially the difference. At the end of the year, we take off the first two months and we add the first two months of the following year so that it's the correct 12 months for uh, collections of that fiscal year. So really the difference is the difference between January and February of 2019 and January and February of 2020. When you take off one and add the other, that difference is the amount that you're seeing. I see, I see. I did not account for the revenue. I was just yeah. looking at the projects. Yeah, Thank so you. we do, to, to try to keep this as simple as possible, we do cash basis for the four mm -hmm. quarterly reports, but then mm -hmm. the annual report is on the gap basis. And so that means instead of looking at collections by period we look at collections for the year and so that includes the revenue accrual of the uh, the previous fiscal year being taken off and the revenue accrual of the current fiscal year being added to it gotcha. i hope i didn't confuse everybody but it's really just trying to align if you um, if you follow our sales tax report the the money that we received in june was actually for sales that occurred in april and so the money that we receive in February is actually for sales that occurred in December. So January and February sales get added, if you will, to the, to the fiscal year of 2019. But then January and February of 2019 get, were actually added to 2018. Gotcha. So if we didn't do it that way, our first quarter report would look really weird because we'd have one quarter of revenue and three quarters of expenses. So we do cash basis on the quarterly reports and gap on the annual report. Understood, thank you. Does that make sense? Okay. That, that does, that does make sense. <clears throat> Are there any other questions on the um, street and infrastructure sales tax? No. Okay, we will move on to the transportation sales tax. This is um, two tenths of a cent. The 2019 budget was 4.36 million. Collections were uh, 3.5 million. I believe when the 2019 budget was being written, uh, there was a, um, a difference of opinion of how the uh, accounting would change when the sales tax for the uh, extra um, project ended that uh, 0 0.05 cent that used to be for transit and is now for um, housing. I think that's why the budget was uh, slightly off. But the unspent tax from prior years is uh, just over 3.3 million. The uh, expenditures for the year is 206,000 for the staff cost and 3.97 million for the transit cost for a total of 4.17 million leaving uh, funds available for future projects of 2.7 million. In addition to that, as I said, we have the 0 0.05 cent uh, that was originally anticipated to be 413,000. Uh, actual collections were 383,000. And so the unspent prior portion of 7.6 million plus that 
is our now available balance for that uh, multimodal facility that's currently being um, working its way through the process. So there's 7.98 million, if you will, available for that multimodal facility, and there's 2.8 million for the rest of the transit operations based on the sales tax. And this is one where the, um, the extra sheet that's provided that shows the breakdown cost by uh, category might be uh, more helpful for you. The uh, top itemizes out the staff cost and the operating cost uh, for the facility. And then the middle section is where we itemize the cost for the transit operation itself. With the majority of that going to First Transit, the city's contracted vendor, um, and also the uh, Johnson County Transit, uh, that agreed payment to pay for the K-10 connector. And then lastly, the, uh, the facility that houses all of the transit operations is actually owned by KU. And so we jointly share the cost of that building as well as the fuel uh, purchases for both the buses of the city routes and the KU routes. And so that was $670,000 in 2019. I'd be happy to answer any questions about transit. Somewhere where we're getting electric buses? Yes, under the um, CARES Act funding that was passed in 2020, uh, the city was awarded a significant uh, transit grant from the federal government, and a portion of that is going to be uh, used to upgrade a portion of our fleet to electric buses. Hmm. You all probably won't. Um, see any of that because that'll all be done on the federal grant side it, it won't have uh, any impact on sales tax unless there is a match component but i don't believe there's a match component on those buses okay any questions on transit no. all right we'll move on to the last sales tax which is the um 0 0.05 for public uh, housing assistance. The thing about this tax is it started in April. And so again, um, I think we had a little uh, difference in what we thought was going to be the collection period versus what it really was when we got through with the audit. So the current year taxes collected were actually $722,000. None of that money has actually been spent as of December 31st, 2019. Um, I added this footnote down here at the bottom uh, to assist you all that in September of 2019, the uh, Affordable Housing Advisory Committee recommended that 475000 of that 722000 be awarded. The City Commission agreed to that, and we're in that contract process right now. And I believe either uh, the meeting tomorrow or next week's meeting, um, one of those um, projects is being awarded uh, the larger one. I think I have, yes. It's 350000 to Bethel Estates uh, for the assistance of 42 rental units and 125000 to Porchlight Homes for the assistance of six townhomes that were approved by the City Commission. So those contracts are currently working their way through the city uh, process. And once they've been awarded, and those contracts have been issued, then you'll start to see expenditures from the sales tax. Until that time, we just report what we've collected. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about the housing assistance sales tax. Could you repeat the projects again? So there's Porsche Light, and then what was the first one? Yes, the first one is Bethel Estates for 350000 and it's to assist 42 rental units. And then there was 125,000 for porch light for six townhomes. Are those new construction projects? Both of those are new, yes. Okay. If there aren't any further questions, I believe a uh, motion to approve the report would be in order. If 
if nobody has any questions, I would motion to approve the report. I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Give me just a second here and I'll pull up the first quarter report. <clears throat> Since we did not have our meeting in April, we're going to try to cover that first. So this is the first quarter report for 2020. So you can see that uh, unspent tax number is the number from the 2019 report. Collections for the first uh, three months of the year was 1.3 million. And the projects that have uh, currently started in 2020 is the sidewalk program, some um, advertisement on the Lawrence Loop project, the 19th and Iowa Street underpass, and Castle Drive, Clinton to hy the majority of these costs, as you can see from the uh, added sheet, is design work. There's a little bit of construction cost on the 19th and, under, uh, 19th and Iowa underpass as well. But uh, in the first three months, we have uh, just under $72,000 of expenses, just over $1.3 million of uh, revenue. So our available taxes uh, currently is $2.4 million at the end of uh, March. 2020. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on the capital and infrastructure sales tax. Nope. Seeing none, we'll move on to transit. The unspent taxes on transit is uh, just under 2.8 million. Uh, year year to date collections are 959,000 and we have staff cost of 58,000 transit cost of 390,000 for a total uh, spent for the first uh, quarter of 448,000 so the available taxes uh, currently available is uh, 3.27 million and on the detail sheet the majority of um, these uh, Staff costs, the 58000 is for the employees and also software maintenance for the various software programs that uh, are utilized. And the majority of the cost for transit is to First Transit, who's our uh, third party administrator, and also KU for the proration of utility and fuel charges for the shared space. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have. I'm fine. Again, the uh, half cent will now just sit idle until those funds are utilized by the city commission for the multimodal facility and any other projects that they uh, desire based on the ballot language. Lastly, the, uh, half, the new 0 .05 tax for uh, public affordable housing Year-to-date collections are 240000 Again, no expenditures have occurred to date. Uh, as I just reported out, the uh, first expenditures we'll see are going to most likely be in uh, either later this month or August. Uh, so there's nothing to report on the for first quarter, which means the unspent balance from 2019 plus the unspent balance in 2020 has $962,000 available for uh, future public housing projects. Again, 475,000 of that has already been earmarked. And if there's... Just out of curiosity, are there a lot of requests for projects regarding I, this? I believe the way Ahab is doing this is that they're going to take um, a look at projects twice a year. And so... Um, they're, I believe they're gearing up for that next, uh, that next round, if you will. Um, they don't feel that it's very beneficial to the community to 
to you know try and parse out a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and so uh, they're really looking at that five hundred thousand dollar threshold. Every time they have five hundred thousand, that's when they'll announce uh, because they're really trying to get that the big bang for the for the buck, if you will. Um, and as you can see from the two projects that have been funded, um, the you know the more money they have available, the more affordable housing units they're able to to provide within the development. So. Um, I haven't been a part of those meetings, but just what I've heard uh, in reading their minutes and uh, you know, sort of staying abreast on the back end, that, that seems to be their methodology, is that there'll be two allotments a year. Thank you. This is Casey Toomey, Assistant City Manager. First, apologize for my tardiness to the meeting. Um, but second, I uh, earlier today sat in on the AHAP meeting, and Affordable Housing Advisory Board meeting, and um, they talked a little bit about um, that some of the members have been surprised at the number of applications that they do receive that they're not, they don't get as many as maybe they expected to receive. Um, they're spending a little bit of their uh, time looking at um, maybe barriers uh, to why people don't apply. Um, specific examples that came up today were um, that their, their scoring matrix that they use when they're reviewing applications um, gives uh, points to people who have had success um, with affordable housing projects in the community. And so if you're new to the community or new to the process, that might be a structural issue where your, your proposal might not be scored as high, so you might not want to apply. Um, they also talked a little bit about um, just kind of equity in general and um, explored the idea of using a toolkit to kind of compare their application to, um, to uh, one of the toolkits that the community, well, the city has been talking about, um, a GARE equity toolkit, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, um, that uh, is a kind of a rubric to go through when you're looking at um, budget discussions or policy development to, to see if you're doing things equitably. Um, and so they're kind of trying to work through that application and see if maybe some of those are the reasons behind why they're not getting applications. Um, so just, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but uh, since I just, it was fresh on my brain, thought I would share. Well, it's interesting. Thanks. I'm curious about it. So thank you. there are no further questions, I believe a, a motion to approve the court uh, report would be in order. I motion to accept the uh, first quarter 2020 uh, report. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Just for the record, uh, Linda Gwaltney made the uh, motion and Amber seconded that emotion, that, emo that motion, and the motion was passed 3-0. All right, let me pull up the second quarter report. Share this screen, just one second. Okay, now that we're on to the second quarter report, these would be all of the revenues collected from January through June 30. Uh, as you can see, uh, collections year to date in the street and infrastructure sales tax are just over 2.6 million. We now have projects totaling 885,000. Um, our largest project is the 2019 uh, street mill and overlay project as well as 19th Street Reconstruction, Iowa to Naismith, and um, Castle, Clinton to Hy-Vee, leaving available for future projects uh, 2.9 million. We also have uh, those expenses broken out uh, by vendor if you'd like to look at that. I'd be happy to answer any questions on the capital and infrastructure sales tax. 
So that budgeted collection of five point six million, that's for the entire year. That was okay. our original budget, yes. Mm -hmm. And so how is it looking? Well, um, we're currently projecting that the sales tax is going to come in about 15% um, under what we collected in 2019. So that's quite a bit different than the original budget that anticipated a 2% increase over 2018. Um, and so um, in terms of the sales taxes, however, we believe we had adequate, adequate cash reserves, as you can see from the reports, to sort of weather that storm. Um, you'll see a little bit of a modification when we talk about the 2021 budget. Um, we're currently anticipating that 2021 is going to be just slightly below what we originally thought 2020 would be based on what we're seeing. Um, you know, the economy essentially started to open up again in June. Uh, there's been a little bit of a lag um, in that reporting, as we discussed earlier. So we really don't have a, a good clean uh, data set this early in the in the process um, so adjustments throughout 2021 could occur um, if we continue to see sales lag behind our estimates um, but based on what we're currently projecting um, we think that we're we're going to see probably about a 15 percent drop in sales tax from 2019 to 2020. Just out of curiosity, has use tax gone up significantly? I wouldn't say it's significant, but it has gone up. Um, it's gone up higher than we predicted that it would. Um, you know, there's not a lot of modeling out there for a pandemic, you know. So conventional wisdom says that you sort of look at your last couple of recessions and what the economy did during those recessions. And so that's what we did. Um, we had anticipated that even though people were sheltering in place, there would probably be a more conservative um, or hoarding nature, if you will, that people would stop um, spending on things that wouldn't be considered a necessity. And um, to be fair, we're not really sure, you know, when you buy things on Amazon, if you would consider that to be a necessity or if you're just shopping in normal uh, course. Um, so those estimates were a little bit higher than we had originally anticipated. They certainly do not cover uh, the losses that we saw in the retail sector and the res and the uh, restaurant sector um, and uh, retail um, shopping was a little higher than we had anticipated as well. Um, so those are those are a couple of the reasons why our sales tax estimates are um, being revised upward now uh, based on our original estimate. Um, but you know, again, we've we've really only got two months of data in a uh, what we're you know projecting to be um a six to 18 month pandemic so um we're on the the very front end of this and uh, as we've reported to the the city commission you know as as new information comes we'll continue to make adjustments and modifications um but uh the information that we're providing is the best that we have available right now There's no other questions about the infrastructure sales tax. We'll move to the public transportation. So collections from January to June of the transit tax are just uh, under $1.8 million. You can see the staff cost is 95,000 and the uh, transit operation cost is 1.5 million. So total expenditures uh, January to June is 1.6 million leaving 2.9 million available year to date for uh, transit projects. And looking at transit, the majority of the staff costs, $63,000 is for uh, salary and benefits. The 24,000 that we noted in the first quarter report for software maintenance uh, are the two largest expenditures there. In terms of the um, operation cost, our contract with First Transit is uh, just under $1.2 million, and expenses shared with KU is just under $300,000, um, making up the majority of the $1.5 million spent on operations thus far. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have.
Again, we're showing the um, former public tra uh, transit expanded tax, that available balance of 7.8 million, or I'm sorry, 7.9 million. And then the housing tax uh, collections January through June are $448,000. Uh, the unspent prior tax is 722,000. So year to date, we have 1.1 uh, 1 million available for projects with 475,000 already being earmarked. And I'd be happy to answer any questions on the second quarter report that you may have. Oh, I, I'm just a little confused. That uh, 700,000 number, that should not be 900,000, right? Because you, <clears throat> the difference is in the tax collected. Correct. To, um, right, okay. If there aren't any other questions, I, be, I believe a motion would be in order. Um, I move to accept the second quarter 2020, uh, 2020 report. I would second the motion. All those in favor? Very good. Give me one second here. Our last item on the agenda is the 2021 budget. So for the public uh, transportation sales tax. We're projecting the sales tax in 2021 to be four point, uh, just under $4.3 million. Um, that is higher than 2020. It's not as high as what we had originally anticipated. It's actually just 95% of our original budget for 2020. The um, current data is showing that we are going to improve incrementally over time. Um, you know, so we didn't want to um, be so pessimistic that we impacted operations, but we also want to be realistic in our expectation uh, and our understanding that this is a new pandemic of which we've only experienced a few months. Um, so the understanding is that that number may fluctuate based on uh, the actual experience that we uh, see throughout the rest of this fiscal year. But based on the data available to us today, we're projecting that the sales tax will be uh, 4.2 million the uh, funding that's uh, held over or that we anticipate will be held over at the end of 2020 is 10.7 million. So that would make 14.98 million available uh, in 2021. Of that, you can see we've got personnel costs slated at 92,000, transit operations at 3.2 million. Uh, the multimodal facility we've discussed is uh, scheduled at 3.5 million. Shelters and amenities, this would be upgrades and enhancements to all the various shelters that are currently in the system at 200,000. And then we're setting aside 2.2 million of the sales tax um, for future transit bus purchases. Um, I'm not necessarily, necessarily sure that that 2.2 will be the electric buses. I think that's all the federal money, um, but I can get that answer for you. And so um, with this uh, recommended budget of $9.2 million, we would show an excess or, or money available for future years of 5.7 million for the uh, public transportation sales tax. I'd be happy to answer any questions you all may have on that. Okay, moving on to the infrastructure sales tax. Again, sort of the same story. We're projecting um, 5.3 million for the sales tax to be collected in 2021. That's roughly 95% of what our original 2020 budget was. 
Um, we think that we'll have 2.1 million available at the end of 2020 to put toward uh, future projects, giving us uh, just under 7.5 million for uh, projects in 2021. The projects that are being recommended to the City Commission are uh, the Americans for Disabilities Act ramp improvements of 250,000, a uh, extension on 27th Street at the Youth Sports Complex of 250,000, a improvement to the irrigation systems at the sports complex and the golf course that would allow them to use what's called gray water, uh, which is essentially reclaimed water that hasn't been purified. So it's not, you know, for drinking purposes and it's not for recreation, but it is an allowable use for, um, for uh, vegetation. And that would be a $350,000 improvement uh, to make those changes. It would save long term on the water cost for maintaining the grounds at both the sports complex and the golf course. Uh, $250,000 investment to sidewalk, um, bike, and pedestrian improvements throughout the city. Five point, uh, almost six million dollars for street maintenance projects, and then a green pavement intersection crossing project that um, was identified at 382,000. So the total of all the projects identified is the same as the total available. If all of these projects were funded and fully expended in the current fiscal year, we would have no money left over at the end of the year. Um, obviously that won't happen, but this is our uh, budget plan. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have about these projects. Sorry, I, Linda, I believe you're muted. Is there, um a 19th street extension is that this year the um yeah the 19th street yeah. extension was part of 2019 i believe okay. well 19th street was reconstructed iowa to naismith are you thinking of a different segment of 19th well i was thinking from like harper east there was a 19th Street project. I guess that hasn't been approved. It was just on the agenda, I think, last Tuesday. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I believe. I won't get the number right, but they had the decision about this wide or this wide or this wide right. of the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe you'll see that in the uh, third and fourth quarter reports of 2020. And okay. there probably will be a portion of that that um, is currently factored in that surplus number. That will be, you know, that'll send, once a contract is written, it'll roll over into the next year. So we'll most likely see expenditures in 2021, but they'll actually be of 2020 dollars. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? If not, the last sales tax is the affordable housing sales tax and um, as we've discussed previously, this one goes through uh, the Affordable Housing Advisory Board first. So there really is no um, formal plan from our perspective. That plan will be met, uh, meted out by the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Really all we're setting aside is the available funding for projects to be identified uh, by AHAB and then uh, approved by the City Commission. So. Um, much as we've discussed, we're projecting that the sales tax for 2021 will be 878,000. That's 95% of the 2020 budget. We have the, uh, we're projecting that we'll have 693 available by the end of this year, which make, which means we have 1.57 million available for projects. Um, the projects that we've identified for AHAB for 2021 is currently 1.24 million. Um, leaving 335,000 as a buffer, if you will. Uh, part of that buffer is um, when AHAB uh, deliberates, they could potentially issue more money than we currently anticipate in the fourth quarter, which would drive down that 693 number. So we wanted to have a little bit of a cushion. Uh, so we're not spending the same dollars twice, if you will. But um, this is our current plan as recommended for uh, the affordable housing sales tax in 2021 and i'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about that
Hearing none, uh, the last thing I'd like to say about um, the sales taxes is in 2021 and moving forward, we're, the report's going to be slightly different. Um, the city is recommending to the city commission essentially that all of the funds be um, you know, recorded in their proper fund, but then those funds be transferred for capital projects to the capital project fund, for uh, maintenance projects to a maintenance fund, et cetera. So the, the transit fund won't change. Those operations will all stay in the transit fund. But what's currently being shown in the capital sales tax, essentially what you'll see quarter to quarter is the sales tax collected and transferred to the CIP fund. And then we'll show you the projects that are funded out of the CIP, what was budgeted, what's been expended, and what's available. Um, so it'll sort of be a two-step process, if you will. Um, but going forward, in the actual sales tax fund, there really won't be much of a balance. That'll all be uh, um, earmarked for capital projects. As those projects uh, finish, if there's any available money left, it'll go back to the sales tax fund to be appropriated toward future projects uh, in an upcoming fiscal year. So uh, it's going to be presented slightly different than uh, what you're used to. But uh, when we get there, you know, we'll walk through it and um, hopefully it, it won't present much of a problem, but the, the legal expenditure of the fund will be transferring it to the capital project fund. I don't think that's enough detail for you all to be satisfied that that meets the voters' intent. And so then we're going to do essentially a deep dive in the capital project fund by project number to show you where those dollars went, if that makes sense. So what you're seeing here, these um, projects that are outlined, this money is actually going to leave the sales tax fund and go to the capital improvement fund and be spent out of there. So when we get to 2021, that first quarter, you'll probably see those first three lines, projected sales tax, prior year, what's available. Then there'll be a line that says transferred to the capital sales tax fund or the capital improvement fund. And then the expenditures will be what was expended in the capital improvement uh, fund, if that makes sense. Okay. It's, yeah, I think I followed that. And I guess yeah, really what we're trying to do is, um, if you think about the city's finances as buckets, we really want a bucket for the general operation of the city, which will be the general fund, a bucket for the general capital projects of the city, which will be the capital improvement fund. So the capital sales tax will tie into that. The transit sales tax may tie into that. Um, other funding sources will tie into that as well. And then the third bucket is our uh, vehicle and equipment replacement. And so the only thing that that will impact in terms of the sales tax is that when the fire department purchases equipment, it won't be in the capital sales tax fund. It'll be in that vehicle and equipment fund. So we'll show you the transfer into that fund, and then we'll show you that expenditure out of the capital or the vehicle and equipment replacement fund. So it's going to look a little different than it has in past. That's why I just wanted to share that with you. Um, but the idea is, hopefully, it'll be more transparent as we go uh, where all the different funding mechanisms are coming from for the capital improvement plan, the uh, vehicle and equipment replacement plan, and the maintenance plan. And with that, I don't have uh, any other remarks on the budget other than uh, the ordinance for your committee. Uh, tasks you all with approving the projects as listed as being compatible with what the voters intended for the sales tax. So if you have any questions about the projects we've identified, um, I'd be happy to answer those. If not, I believe a motion agreeing that the recommended budget complies with the voters intent would be in order. Okay, um, I move that we accept the uh, city manager's recommended budget report for 2021. And I would second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. Those are all of the staff reports. 
Okay. It looks like um, we're about ready to adjourn. I guess we need to encourage people to join the sales tax audit committee. <laughs> we need two more people. And our next meeting is October 12th. Maybe we'll be in person. <laughs> let's hope. Hopefully. Let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah, let's hope. Yeah, the current. So motion to adjourn. Uh, real quick, if yes. we are trying to help find um, people to serve on this committee, what what do we need to do? The best thing to do is to um, point them toward our website where the boards and commissions are. The application to apply is located right there. Um, so they can go to uh, lawrenceks.org and then click the button that says boards and commissions. They'll find the application there. Those applications get forwarded to the mayor who ultimately makes appointments to the boards and the commissions through the city commission. So if you have anyone who is uh, interested in joining this committee, uh, they're certainly welcome to contact me and I can walk them through that process or they can go to our website and uh, look for the application there. Is there anything specific as far as like criteria or anything specific that is helpful to have on the committee or? Um, I don't believe that there's anything that I would say uh, would be specific. I, you know, you all have been on the committee for a while and sort of know, you know, we walk through uh, the, the intent of this committee is really to ensure that the voters uh, intent for the purchases are being followed. Um, and so we do what we can to help you all make that determination. Um, you know, having a finance background certainly wouldn't hurt, but I don't, I don't believe it uh, would deter anyone from joining the committee either. Yeah. Um, and then what is it? You just have to live in Lawrence? Yes, I believe that is the only requirement. Casey, are you aware of any other requirements? Um, I was thinking that the, um, it, there might be a live or own a business. In oh, that, yeah, I'm trying to pull the business, ordinance right now. Business, I can't remember. There seems like there's some, some second piece of that requirement, but there is out on the same web page, the, um, advisory board policy that outlines kind of those, those criteria. Yeah. And it, I think there are, you know, different lengths of terms. And I know that sometimes is, can be intimidating to folks, but, um, you know, I think that's, it, it wouldn't be the worst thing if someone joined and didn't like it and decided they needed to leave before the end of their term. So, um, encourage folks to try it because they might like it. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so as Casey mentioned, the bylaws for this committee are also out there on that, that same page. So. Uh, anybody that would like to uh, join the committee can see the annual reports that have been approved since 2009, which I think provides some helpful background information, as well as the um, advisory board policy, the ethics policy that was passed by the city commission, the bylaws specific to this committee, and the ordinance that established this committee. They're all out there together. So one-stop shop, if you will. Cool. Great. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. See you on the 12th of October. Okay. Very good. Thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Jeremy. And great job, Linda. <laughs> good job. Yeah. If you guys have any questions at any time, feel free to give me a call. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.